C-Sharp 12 is closer than ever. From primary constructors to more experimental features, this release is shaping up to be huge. Let's check out what you need to know about C-Sharp 12. Let's go. Kicking off our list, c -sharp 12 brings us primary constructors for non-recorded classes and structs. In c -sharp prior to version 12, if you needed to create a class with properties, the usual practice would involve declaring private backing fields for each property. These fields would then be initialized through a constructor. This added some boilerplate code, making the class definition lengthy and at times tedious to write and read. Now, with c -sharp's primary constructors, things are a lot smoother. You can now effortlessly design primary constructors for any class or struct. Say goodbye to excessive redundant coding. Just think parameters in your class available everywhere. That's right, no more repeated private fields resulting in more streamlined and efficient code. Up next are the enhanced using directives. Using directives have been an integral part of c -sharp for creating aliases and bringing namespaces into the scope of your code. Before c -sharp 12, this was mostly restricted to creating aliases for namespaces or to import multiple namespaces, making it easier to reference them. With c -sharp 12, the power of using is extended further to handle more complex types like tuples and arrays. In addition to the well-known non-nullable value types, we can now assign aliases to tuples, arrays, and even nullable integers. And what do we get from that? Well, cleaner, more readable, and well-organized code. Well, Lambda expressions have also gotten an update. Lambda expressions have always been a staple of C-sharp. However, before the innovations of C-sharp 12, if you wanted to use default values in a Lambda, you often had to resort to wrapping the Lambda inside a separate method. It was a workaround, but not the most elegant solution. c 12 streamlines this with the ability to directly set default values in Lambda expressions. The syntax is the same as adding default values for arguments to any method. So no confusion there. Let's talk debugging and code referencing, essential elements of development. NameOff has been an invaluable tool since its introduction in c 6. Its initial form was somewhat limited. You could retrieve the name of code elements, but without the direct referencing of instance members, without having an actual instance. c 12 takes the name of operator to the next level, making it even more versatile. Ever felt the frustration of typing name off over and over to tap into instance members? c 12 is here with a remedy. Unlike before, where using the name of keyword with an instance field meant needing an instance of the object, now c 12 allows it just with the class name. Thanks for watching the video so far. I wanted to also thank our sponsor NordVPN. They're amazing. I've been using the application forever and NordVPN allows me to connect to, for example, Tokyo or Japan in general. And this allows me to watch my favorite TV shows in Japanese with Japanese subtitles and obviously also other uh, shows in other countries, shows that might only be available in half a year or never in Germany, I can access through NordVPN. I'm super happy about it. Then I can go ahead and watch my favorite shows, not only on my phone, but also in my browser on the PC. But even more amazing is the fact that I can use my NordVPN application also on my smart TV and I can directly access it on a TV. Don't have to bother doing it on a computer, which is still fine but it's just so convenient. So thanks a lot to the sponsor NordVPN. Now let's get back to the content. Core to c 12 is efficiency. Using the params keyword has been a staple in c -sharp for creating methods that can accept a variable amount of arguments. Historically, this was done using arrays. While efficient, these arrays, when used with params, always allocated on the heap, potentially introducing performance overhead. The params keyword now endorses the span struct, coupled with the advent of inline arrays. This paves the way for developers to craft an array of predetermined size within a struct type, mostly used indirectly when presented as system.span or system.readonlySpan objects from runtime APIs. Taking a glimpse into what's next, interceptors, although in their infancy, 
These are geared up to revolutionize compilation, facilitating method call redirection and setting the stage for customized code paths. Enhancing or intercepting method behaviors is not entirely new. Developers often resorted to aspect-oriented programming, AOP, using tools like PostSharp. These tools allow developers to inject behaviors into methods without modifying their actual code. This was useful but often required additional dependencies and sometimes complex configurations. c 12's experimental interceptors seem to be heading in a direction that might allow these behaviors natively, without the need for external tools. An interceptor stands out as a method that can swap a call to an interceptable method with its own running during compile time. Imagine interceptors as the guides of code redirecting method calls to different code routes. By defining specific attributes, you command the direction. It's noteworthy though that interceptors are primarily crafted with source generators in view. Curious? Well, let's see them in action. Once we enable them, regex calls using a static pattern become more efficient through compile time optimization, great for ahead of time or AOT compilation. In the world of ASP.NET minimal APIs, interceptors allow us to directly call the user's handler, cutting out unnecessary steps. Dependency injection gets streamlined too. With interceptors, calls can be instantly optimized. Lastly, at least for now, serializers get a boost. Interceptors optimize them during compile time based on specific calls like serialize my type. However, it's worth noting, interceptors as of C 12 or .NET 8 will probably remain in the experimental zone, but might cement their place in future C -sharp updates. Who knows, right? Interceptors are a brand new thing in C-Sharp, so not much is known yet about them and many things may change over time. But we can, if you want, do a deep dive into what interceptors are going to look like and do a quick little comparison to what we had to work with before them. So if you want us to make a video on that topic specifically, let us know in the comments below. And with that, that should have brought you up to speed when it comes to what's new in C Sharp 12. Obviously C Sharp 12 isn't even out yet at the point of recording this video and there might be some changes still coming, but once they're there, I will definitely create another video. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. Do you have any questions or any remarks, any other features that you would like us to present? Just let us know in the comments down below and also hit a like button while you're at it. Thank you very much for watching the video and as always, happy coding.